Hey everybody, welcome back. Mike from Spectre Comics here. Today I wanted to do a comic book cover tutorial. I wanted to walk through my process on how I come up with my covers for Spectre Comics. Now if you've seen any of my recent Spectre videos related to drawing my comics, you know that I've recently finished Spectre Comics issue 6 and the only thing left to do now is to come up with a cover design and finalize the cover before we send it off to the printer. So I'm actually gonna break this video up into two videos. The first one is gonna be this one, which is gonna be about conceptualizing and drawing the cover. And then the second video, which will follow this one, will be about digital coloring and then finalizing the cover before I send it off to the printer with the rest of the book. So make sure you subscribe so you stay tuned for that one and get alerted when I upload that video. So the first thing I do is I create a blank sheet with a bunch of rectangles on it. The rectangles represent little mini covers. I do about eight to 10 of these. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create little quick sketches. I'm gonna go through the scenes uh, in my book. I'm gonna flip through my book. I'm gonna come up with some ideas looking at the scenes in the book, so the characters in the book and what's going on and just do quick sketches about uh, each one. Anything that pops in my head, anything that seems interesting, because the idea is I want something to pop off the page. If somebody sees my book on my table at Comic-Con or on the shelf in a comic book store someday, hopefully, um, I want them to pick up the cover because it's interesting and find out uh, what's going on here. I want to read more. So I'm just going to go ahead and do those quick studies, quick sketches, get them down on paper. And now I have eight to 10 options to look at and see, it'll just tell me right away. Something looks interesting. It'll pop off the page to me and see what I can develop further. So going through this process, I liked the second thumbnail. I thought that one I could develop a little further and create an interesting cover out of it. So after I pick the thumbnail I'm going to use, I'm going to go ahead right to my comic book template, my cover template. Now, if you've seen a lot of my other videos, I've talked about my comic book page template. I also have a comic book cover template and it's set up for doing a comic book cover. It's got the logo on it. It's got the little graphic in the upper left hand corner. It's got the issue number. It's got my name on it and it's got all the colors that I'm going to use so I can keep my covers uh, consistent color wise between the characters from issue to issue. So that way I don't have to go and pick uh, use the picker in Photoshop to come up with the color scheme uh, for each comic book cover. So uh, the template's already set up. If you're interested in seeing a video on how my comic book t uh, cover template is set up, uh, let me know in the comments below and I'll do a video on that. But getting back to the uh, template, basically what I'm doing, I'm gonna draw the same way that I do uh, as if I'm drawing a comic book page. You know, I'm gonna separate every element into different layers so I can adjust and tweak them if I need to. You'll find, or at least I find, that I like to move stuff around because what I do is I'll, you know, try something here, I'll try something there, I'll adjust things as I go. If things are on separate layers, it's much easier for me to move things around and make small adjustments rather than uh, having to draw something that's behind another thing. So I like to draw all the elements full. I've talked about this in my comic book page drawing that I do like to keep things on separate layers, all characters on separate layers. It just allows me to make the adjustments I need. So the only difference between actually drawing uh, a comic book page for me and, and drawing the cover is the cover's depicting one full big scene on a big sheet. So uh, and also it's in color and my comics are black and white. So the color cover gives me the opportunity to show uh, shade, shadow and color for the characters. And it, I think it also makes a more interesting uh, cover to have it in color. So uh, you don't see too many black and white covers. So I do just draw the same way that I do when I'm working on a comic book page, but now I am depicting a bigger scene and uh, I'll just start sketching everything out. Now I also did something similar to what I do within the book, which is I'll reuse elements. You know, I've drawn things a, a bunch of times. There's no need for me to draw it again and again. If I have it available to me in my library, I keep library of uh, different elements that I put on my pages, whether it's characters, backgrounds, uh, ships, anything that I use, weapons, anything I use over and over again. I've probably drawn it before. I don't have to draw it from scratch again. It saves a heck of a lot of time to reuse elements. So in this case, we're doing a scene where the <clears throat> Spark, the main specter, and Arco sidekick here in this scene are hijacking the enemy vessel. And so we've seen this scene within the book. Uh, they're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and use this, the background, and again, I'm gonna just stretch it up so it fits on a larger page, clean it up, and then put the characters in it uh, where I want them. I can easily move everything around as needed. So I'm gonna just go ahead and create new layers. I'm gonna sketch the characters out. Uh, Arco is up front and he's doing kind of like a, a whisper motion, like be quiet, we're about to take over the enemy vessel. And Spark is up front kind of leading the way 
towards the cockpit of the ship. So that's basically the scene I'm depicting. Now I may go back and make some tweaks to this, uh, this cover to make it a little more dynamic and interesting. But so far, the way it's laying out, I really like the way that it's laying out. I like what it's depicting. And this is one of the more exciting scenes in the book because what's happening is um, uh, the, the characters are, are basically hijacking a ship so they can uh, go off on the second part of their adventure here. So it's, it's a very pivotal scene in the book. Now, the way it's drawn here is not actually how it goes down in the book, but it, it conveys the spirit of what's happening in the scene. So... Uh, I didn't want to draw the exact thing. It, actually, the way the scene goes down, I would have been hard to depict it in a single panel on the cover. So, But again, it's capturing the spirit of the, what's happening in the scene, and it, 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 it should make for an interesting cover for, um, for, for this issue. Now, uh, some of the other thumbnails I thought were interesting as well, but the more I thought about it, um, they didn't convey the, the best part of the story. Um, the one I liked uh, was where they were sitting on the on the uh, the characters. Spark was sitting in the captain's chair on the bridge of the Zebulon. If you're new here, the Zebulon is the Spectre uh, main ship that they use in all their missions, um, and they're watching out the window on, on the, on the uh, they're watching out the main window on the bridge, and they can see the enemy ship coming out of uh, an invisible barrier and going off on their journey. Um, that was an interesting scene, and I actually really like the scene in this issue. However, um, my last two issues, Spe uh, Spectre Comics issue four and five, both had scenes on the bridge. And the second thing I didn't like about it was that uh, the characters would have had to be depicted from behind so that you can get their perspective looking out the window. So from the back, you know, and I didn't really want to draw them with their backs to the camera. So the way I like this scene is that even though they are going forward and we are getting their perspective, they are tilted um, towards the camera, towards the reader. And I thought that made a much more interesting scene and it more engaging, almost like the characters are making eye contact with the reader in this scene. And in a way, Arco's breaking the fourth wall, looking to the reader, like, shh, don't. Uh, he's actually, there's characters that are off screen behind, which he's actually gesturing to, but the reader will, can, can take it as I'm being gestured to as the reader. So uh, that is basically the design and again going through the process of the quick thumbnail sketches uh, to then finalizing the lines and about it you know because the cover is going to be the most visible thing on the comic book you want to make it as sharp and crisp as possible um, I do a lot of heavy line work in my comics and again the line work is going to match what's in my book have you you've ever picked up a comic book and it has an amazing cover and then you open the book and the art's different and it's done by another artist and it's maybe not as good um, whether you like my art or not you're going to get the same quality on the cover that you're going to get in the book um, and I really like that I, li I don't like surprises if I see the cover art if the cover is what makes me pick up the book to read it you know any other comic I want the inside art to match the same quality I want it to be the same quality I want it to look like the same artist drew it um, I know a lot of different some there's some artists out there that just do cover design and you know, that's great, but it it's never going to match the quality of what's actually in the comic book. So I, I really do appreciate that. And that's how my comics are. I draw everything. I color everything myself. The cover is going to match the quality of what's in the book, and there'll be no surprises there for the reader. So this is the final cover design. Um, I may tweak a few things and go back and just make some adjustments and do some experiments. I might experiment with the uh, expression on Arco's face. Um, I may move some things around. I may change the angle to make it look a little more dynamic. There may be some things that I do before I get to the coloring part of the video. You, if you see the next video that I'm going to do, you'll see what the cover looks like tweaked because I definitely want to do that before I color. But uh, this is basically the cover design, and I really like the way it turned out. I think it looks interesting. I think it makes uh, it adds interest to the scene and makes somebody want to pick it up and find out what's going on. So I've accomplished my goal here. It was a pretty simple process. I, I really am a big fan of the brainstorming session with the thumbnails. I think it's really helpful to come up with a design and it always gives you a bunch of options to choose from rather than just coming up with one cover design and then having to stick with it or drawing a full page and realizing you don't like something uh, before you get uh, in, you know, it just gives you the option to 
sketch it first before you finalize it and then end up trashing it if you don't like it. So that is it for this one. Thank you for watching. Go ahead and like the video. Subscribe to my channel. Don't miss the next video, which will be the second half of this video, the coloring process. Go ahead and comment below and don't forget to share the video with comic fans everywhere. Again, that's it. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.